In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Is your heart really that smart? Have you ever heard that phrase before, heart smart? Typically, it's used when discussing your diet, the stuff you're eating. A heart smart diet is one which is filled with the best food to keep your heart healthy and functioning normally so that it can pump life-sustaining blood to all of your organs. But what kind of foods are on this beneficial menu. Searching for an expert analysis of a nutritious diet, I landed on sites like WebMD and the world-renowned medical institution Mayo Clinic. And here's the sample of different meals they consider heart smart. For breakfast, they recommend something called muesli, rolled oats, dried fruit, uncooked walnuts, Boy, that really opened my eyes in the morning. Unfortunately, no mention of those new donut sticks from McDonald's. Lunch, black bean salsa taco with a splash of hummus on the side. It's a bit different than my fave, which is greasy leftover pizza with a dollop of French dressing as a topper. How about supper? Garlic garlic broccoli pasta which they describe as hearty and heartwarming, along with a couscous salad. And not sure where couscous should go, but it's not in my mouth. (laughs) This dietary lesson really illustrates the close relationship between the mouth and the heart. In order for individuals to derive the benefits from a heart-smart diet, they first have to decide to put the food into their mouth chew it up, swallow it, which allows the digestive enzymes to interact with the organic material so that the nutrients can actually be absorbed into the bloodstream and pumped around to the individual cells. And it's this last part of the process, the absorption passing through the lining of your intestines that's critical to your survival. Food sitting in your stomach is not really a part of you until the fragments are flowing in the blood. And it's at that point, you are what you eat. I think this example that I'm using today, describing the close connection between what we consume and who we are, holds true in our spiritual life as well. Listen carefully to the selections from today's text. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Is the word really near you? Absolutely, undeniably, it is. Remember what John the Apostle says in chapter 1-1, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This same Word is near us. It's integral and essential as part of us. The Word is the gospel message of Christ, his death, his resurrection, the gift of forgiveness. Paul is saying that Christ is near you. He's in your heart, your spirit. 
and he's in your mouth as you sing praises to him, when you worship him and when you tell others about the joy that he gives you. And not only is he near you, when you were baptized, Christ actually became part of you. You, in a spiritual way, absorbed him. Your heart, the seat of your emotions and your intellect and your will, believes in him. And with your mouth, you can now confess him. Through the water and the word, he became part of you, and you became part of him. Romans 6.4 states, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. John 14.20, Christ says, I am in the Father, and you, that's us, are in me, and I in you. I hope from these verses you get the idea of the inseparable and intimate relationship we have with the Lord and Savior who sacrificed everything for us so that we could be part of him. He's blessed us with the Lord's Supper, the means of grace where we have an opportunity to dine on his true body and blood, strengthening our relationship with him growing our faith as we're washed clean with this spiritually heart-healthy meal. But despite knowing all what's good for our hearts, the latest research concludes the number one killer of both men and women, you guessed it, heart disease. How's that possible? And guess what one of the number one leading factors is that leads to heart disease? Poor diet. In other words, being heart stupid. A diet of several of the following is pretty much heart stupid. Fast food burgers, processed and cured meat, deep fried foods, candy, soft drinks, sugar sweetened juices, sugary cereals, cookies and pastries, and margarine. Are you guilty of binging on any of these or maybe at least sneaking them onto your plate when no one's looking? Eating junk food on a regular basis can lead to heart attacks. And maybe worst of all, we know it's coming. There are all sorts of risk factors that are obvious to us, and yet we choose to ignore them. Signs such as high blood pressure, high LDL, cholesterol, smoking, stress, diabetes, they're all signals of impending heart problems. Well, be honest. What's your diet like on a spiritual level? Heart smart or heart stupid? Did you know that in 2017 alone, Pornhub got 28.5 billion visits? That's almost 1,000 visits each second. 78.1 million per day, way more than the population of the entire United Kingdom. And these statistics include both men and women. Shocking? Oh, maybe your diet includes a dose of sleeping in on Sunday and skipping church. Is that because you have a headache from drinking too much on Saturday night? Does your diet consist of unhealthy consumption of gossiping or swearing or cheating or lying? There just isn't anyone in here who can say that they aren't guilty of consuming the unhealthy aspects that this world has to offer. And they're not good on our spiritual heart. We know what's coming, and deep down, we know what we deserve. We've all been told the wages of sin, the result of sin is nothing short of death. But for us as Christians, we have access to the cleansing, detox diet that strengthens and renews our spirit and gives us courage to face all challenges. During this Lenten season, we're reminded that we've been purged through Christ's death and resurrection. Our entire sinful being has been washed and rinsed, and now we can live a new life. I love the way Luther says, We have received him and crept into him. Isn't that a neat description of our relationship with Christ? That we've crept into him. 
through and by our relationship with him, we have left sin and death and the devil behind. Paul says that we've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. There are times, though, that dieting choices get really confusing, especially when you're trying to figure out which one is best for you. And don't go searching cyberspace for advice. You'll end up with choices like the clean eating diet compared to the eat clean diet. Well, which is better? Low carb, very low carb, or slow carb? Who do you trust with your dietary advice? Atkins, the Mediterraneans, Jenny Craig, or McDougal? No, I did not say McDonald. Here are two diets you might want to avoid. The elimination diet and the dash diet, or maybe those two go together. There is no confusion when it comes to our spiritual diet. These verses reinforce the fact that God richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We don't have to choose some random spiritual diet. He has chosen to feed us, to nurture us, to become part of us. So as you leave chapel today and reach for your mid-morning snack of carrot sticks and mixed nuts, be reminded of the spiritual food that truly nourishes for eternal life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's truly heart smart. Amen.